I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the work that my lab has been doing on augmented reality for games and how that's going to factor into the things that we uh, hope to be doing as part of the Games for Learning Institute. Uh, my name is Steve Feiner. I'm with the uh, Department of Computer Science at Columbia University. And so augmented reality refers to the idea of augmenting the real world, of adding things to what you perceive in the real world, doing this by creating essentially a complementary virtual world. And a lot of AR, including a lot of the work that my group uh, does, involves visual AR, which we're overlaying graphics synthesized by a computer on top of what you see in the real world. We're doing this in a way in which it's being done fast enough um, and in synchrony with and registered with, aligned with what you see in the real world so it looks more or less like it's part of it. You can think of this as being essentially like a kind of real-time version of some of the special effects that you would see in movies. We do this with head-worn displays, with handheld displays, and as well with projectors that project material on the environment around you. Um, now, AR research has actually been ongoing since 1968. The very first interactive 3D computer graphics system developed by Ivan Sutherland uh, for his PhD uh, thesis, excuse me, make that a little bit after his PhD thesis, late 60s, um, was actually the very first AR system as well. Um, and in the many, many decades since then, Moore's Law has uh, come and uh, is happily still not yet gone. Things get faster and faster, smaller and smaller. And my lab started doing AR work back in the early 90s. And at this point, finally, things are getting sufficiently small, sufficiently powerful, inexpensive, well-networked, that we can take things that we used to do just a little more than 10 years ago, like that big backpack-based system that you're seeing over here in the middle, um, and nowadays you can have people uh, create and sell, in fact, and make available in some cases for free, uh, AR applications that do the same kinds of things that we were doing on this big, expensive, bulky stuff uh, on essentially smartphones, like the example that you're seeing on the right over there, just a matter of some 12 years later. So this is a very exciting time, and part of what we're trying to do is to build things that capitalize on the fact that we can finally do these kinds of things inexpensively enough. So one of the things that you're going to be seeing, and that you know, in fact we'll show you during the demo session this afternoon, um, is the use of, in addition to handheld devices, see-through eyewear. And what you're seeing at the upper left over here is an example of a uh, consumer quality, opaque, stereo head-worn display, circa 2009. At the bottom I'm showing you a picture of something that's going to be coming out uh, later on this fall. In this case, from the same company, this is an uh, optical see-through uh, stereo head-worn display looking, again, more and more like regular normal sunglasses and less and less like the big, bulky, funny-looking head-worn displays of not too many years ago. Um, and then off on the right, I'm showing you a couple of things that are not really quite ready for prime time. These are all working examples of uh, eyewear that are much more see-through that actually overlay with a rather nice color image what it is that you're seeing in the world around you. Picture at the bottom might look a little familiar. That's Tom Hanks, who was part of a keynote that uh, Sony did at the Consumer Electronics Show earlier this year, wearing uh, one of these not quite yet ready for prime time, but actually working right now, head-worn displays. So as I said, one of the things we're going to be doing and have been doing is augmented reality games. And part of the idea here is to make the game an actual part of the real world around you. So instead of having the model of the game being something you play on a little game device or play on a big game device, you know, an Xbox, for example, sitting in your living room or play on your PC, the idea is to have the game be something that you take part in as you actually interact with the rest of the world, walking around inside or outside. The same way that I think many of us believe that computing is going to be like that as well. We're seeing some of the forerunners of that being things that you do, the mobile phones that most of you probably will whip out at a moment's notice to look up addresses and dates and uh, surf the web with, for example. And the idea here is to use devices of that sort to make the game actually part of your environment. Again, not the, I'm playing the game over here and this is the game space, but I'm playing the game as I walk around in the world around me. So just to show you a couple of quick little examples of what this looks like. 